for listening to the first Capital Conflab online interview. We've got the full interview to bring you today, which is very exciting. Uh, of course, this is on YouTube, so we have the actual video footage of it. If that's not your style, if you prefer to sit back with headphones in and listen on what is a glorious day outside, if that's more your style, then you can listen to the podcast here. Um, this is a video of it on YouTube, of course, but if you want to hear it other than that, we've got it on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts. All the links for those can be found either on our social media channels at Capital Conflab or through the YouTube channel. This is really exciting. We thoroughly enjoyed talking to Andy the other day. Really nice guy who talks brilliantly about his time at Cardiff City, about Lenny Lawrence, about his rivalry or competition for places, I guess, with Rob Earnshaw, and of course, talks us through that goal which he scored at the Millennium Stadium, now called the Principality Stadium. So if you want to get involved, let us know. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know who you'd like on, or if there's any sports you'd like us to cover in particular. We're, we're open to suggestions. We're really excited with this new project. It's going, we, we think it's going well, at least so far. We've had some really good feedback, and we just want to continue from here. So let us know what you think. Uh, but without further ado, here is the first full-length Capital Conflab interview with Andy Campbell. It's very clear through social media you've got a, a big connection still with the club. Um, yeah. Well, and, and Middlesbrough, obviously, your hometown club. What was it about Cardiff that, I guess, forged that bond? Um, I, well, for me to sign was, was the Lenny Lawrence factor, really. You know, that I, when I, my move first came around, I spoke to Lenny and um, Alan Cork uh, at length about, about coming on loan. and I was humming I was and ahhing. It, it was a big move from going from the Premier League to League One. Um, but after speaking to, to Lenny and Alan Cork, it, it was it was a move that I wish I really wanted to make. And so I'd spoke to them on the Friday, agreed everything on the Friday, uh, and they went down to play. Uh, this was the week after the beat Leeds. Um, they played Wigan Athletic away, uh, and they lost 4-0. Um, and Alan lost his job on the bus on the way home and he got sacked. So there's me thinking, oh well, there's a, there's, there's a potential go. move going out yeah. the window, you yeah. know what I mean? So, so I, I, spoke to, I spoke to Cork, he straight after said, how, how disappointed I was and, and he obviously was looking to get back into football so I was thinking about holding tight and, and seeing what happened and, uh, and things but Lenny obviously rang me um, the day after uh, and said that he's got the job and, and he would still like the move to go ahead and everything so I was, I was extremely keen I'd worked with Lenny before my husband so um, I knew what it was all about I knew some of the players Cav etc from, from the middle of the days and so it was a no-brainer really I wanted to go get some football in um, play some regular football and, and, and see where it went I didn't really look back really during my loan spell and, and I was keen to make it permanent from the day I walked through the door really because it was, it was a club which reminded me a little bit of Middlesbrough. Ninian Park and Essen Park were similar places to play football. Um, and the, the group of players was a lot stronger than, than I anticipated when I first walked in the door and I was I was keen to see where this journey was going to be. You know, that I once I spoke to Sam and Sam told me his dream about getting in the Premier League and of course I, 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 I laughed and thought it was a hype dream because... You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sat in a in a League One meeting, so to speak. You yeah. know what I mean? With a with a management the chairman who um, had the same vision, but as a, as a player, you don't really believe big vision like that. You you, you look at a little step and, and, and progress forward. Because for me to get in the Premier League with Cardiff City was probably never going to be in my time frame. You know what I mean? Unless we got back to back promotions, which which was was, was a really really tough ask at that, that time of football. And you know what I mean? And, and looking forward now, the way the club's got, um, obviously. Sam the man's dream and it was his dream at the time so I'm glad that the club got there you know yeah. what I mean and, and been up there for, for him really because he had a, he had a vision at the start and, and it's been fulfilled really by a, by a host of players managers supporters you know what I mean we've all done it for him really What was Lenny Lawrence like to work on you you said you worked with him at Borough and Cardiff oh, he, like? I mean, he, was, he, was like a, he was like a dad you know what I mean that's probably what the first and foremost thing I'd, I'd say you know what I mean the way, the way he talked to you the way he handled you he wasn't he wasn't really you know he loved football but he wasn't you know what I mean? I would say full on with football. He, he knew he, he wanted to get to know you as a person and, uh, and handle the group of players really well. You know, I mean, we weren't the easiest adjustment. We had experienced players, we had outgoing people, um, people who would, who would be outspoken. Um, but, you know, we, he managed us really well and, and got the best out of us. And um, obviously, there was a disappointment of the first season when I was there, obviously, getting beaten playoffs by Stork. You know, we were his first real season, uh, the following season. You know, I mean, we started well and, and we, didn't really, we didn't really look back. And, uh, he deserved that success, you know, what I mean? because of the effort and the, and the things he put in on and off the pitch. You know, you mentioned would you, that. Would you, sorry, go on, no, go on. Sorry you. Um, would you say Lenny Lawrence is like one of the first managers you had to a really good man management? 
hundred percent. You know, I, I, was, I came from Middlesbrough, Brian Robson, and uh, obviously Brian left uh, Middlesbrough before I before I moved on. And uh, he was the same. He knew how, he knew the dressing room inside out, and, 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 he, and he picked certain people and the players he brought in fit in the dress fit in the dressing room, and the dressing room really responded to that. And you know what I mean? He wasn't. He didn't come in. He wasn't a shout. He wasn't a screamer. You know what I mean? That, that we knew he was disappointed when when we. Um, when we didn't perform the way that he wanted us, and um, he really got the best out of the players um, on and off the pitch, and, and brought us all together, and, and he just knew knew how to handle it, the group of players. And, and to be fair, since his time at, at Charlton, I'm going back back in the day when he first came through management. You know, I mean, you don't manage all them games, a thousand games plus, if you if you're a joker at what you do, you know. So he's, yeah. he's, he's had a, he's had a really really good and successful managerial career. You mentioned the Stoke game, which was in your like the loan spell before you made it a permanent yeah. move. How much yeah. was the sort of because Cardiff at that time were knocking on the door for promotion yeah. up to what's yeah. now the championship. How much yeah. did the defeat, obviously we'll move on to the season after, how much did that defeat in the playoffs sort of spur you on the following season to, to sort of reach where you did? Um, collectively, I think it obviously spurred us on um, a, a hell of a lot. But individually, in myself and all the others, you know, I mean, we spoke about it probably on the phone um, and met up during the summer uh, and made sure that that wasn't going to happen again. You know, that I... Um, I'd finished the season. Obviously, that was uh, that was um, that was a night game, wasn't it? Uh, that we played Stoke. And, yeah. and um, Lenny said that after after the game, he said, "Go and get yourselves on holiday." He said, "I'll be in touch about what day we're going to come back." So, um, I'd uh, I was going to go back and stay in Cardiff for a couple of days, but I, straight after the game, I was that annoyed and frustrated and upset about what had happened. I drove back to to Middlesbrough. Oh wow! Just straight after the game, and didn't get back till about five, four or five o'clock in the morning. And, it, it, it was probably the best thing I did because by the time I drove back, it gave me a, a, an understanding of what had just happened. I'd thought about the game constantly all the way home, uh, driving back, um, and uh, realised quite quickly how determined I was to make sure that wasn't going to happen again. I was, I was extremely disappointed the way that, that the game finished in 90 minutes with them scoring late, extra time to score late again. And, um, and I was determined to get myself fit, in good shape, carry on all the way through the summer to make sure that we give our best, our, our, uh, give ourselves the best possible chance to get promoted in the next season, and, and to not have to do the playoffs again. Because uh, granted, we had the year uh, after, but we wanted to go up as champions. You know, the, 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 the notoriously teams who get beaten in the playoffs the next season, they have a really strong season um, and, and normally go up automatically, like QPR did the season after they, they got beat by us in the yeah. playoff final. So. You know, we wanted to do that and, and, and give ourselves the best possible chance. And thankfully, you know, what I mean, we all stayed together as a group. You know, what I mean, we didn't make that many wholesale changes in the summer. Uh, we kept a strong nucleus of, uh, of players, and and um, and, and, that, and that showed the ambition of the club for me. Um, and then we kicked on as a as a as a whole group. I was going to say because I looked up the stats for that next season and the season where you went up, and it was over eleven players in that team made forty appearances in the league. Which you know, as you say, the core group was an Ernie yeah. bagging in thirty five goals. Always. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think we when we started pre-season, we had a really good pre-season. We got ourselves in really good shape and uh, had some really good uh, pre-season results, games, performances, and and took it on into the, into the first well, the first game against Oldham, and then and then obviously uh, then we played the League Cup game at Boston, and, and, we, and we we kicked on we kicked on forward and some good sides in that league that year. And, yeah. Um, and to be fair, we deserved everything we got, and you know, we were lucky not to probably get a little bit closer and get promoted automatically. But if someone was going to offer us promotion where we got it as a group you take it because it's the best way to go up but it's obviously the most nerve-wracking as well so you know you've got to be, got to be very careful what you wish for <laughs> what was your relationship like with the other the other strikers at the time Ernie obviously Peter Thorne and Leo who I saw you were chatting with the other day with the yeah. Cardiff City podcast yeah well we, we, we got on really well there was Gab Gordon as well and um, obviously my first year we had uh, Paul Grayson so we, you know what I mean we we knew that during the season, you know what I mean, a 50, 55 game season, hopefully, you know what I mean, that you're going to interact with each other on the pitch, you know what I mean, so you've got to get, get get on off the pitch, there's no point having a, um, having a duel where you, where you where there's there's no respect, that you don't get on with each other, you know what I mean, that, that I started the season against Oldham, scored the first goal, I, I was rested for this for that midweek game against Boston, which I was disappointed about, because I wanted to play, I just, I just had a good game, the first game of the season, Ernie scores a hat-trick, and you know what I mean? You're only as good as your last game, and you know what I mean. The, the, I remember Lenny pulled me before the Saturday game and told me that I wasn't going to play. I was extremely disappointed, but I accepted that someone's just scored a hat trick. So how how on earth you can drop a player? Because if that's the other way around, that uh, you know what I mean. I'd, I'd come from Middlesbrough where the uh, Brian Robson was very fair with me that um, I kept Janini out of the team for a good 10, 12 games, and you know what I mean. I know that if you, you, you're rewarded by performances on the pitch, and, and Ernie scored three, deserved to stay in. I was waiting for him to, 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 to have a dry spell. It didn't happen. <laughs> Never happened. So, you, you, you know what I mean? But that, but that got us promoted. That got us where we were. And, you know what I mean? If Ernie hadn't scored all them goals, then the 
potentially we wouldn't have got in the playoffs. I wouldn't have scored my, my goal in the playoff final. So you've got to look at the bigger picture. And, you know what I mean? As a group, it, it, it pushed me on. It, 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 it pushed the rest of the group and the rest of the players on. It gave us a successful season. And, and as a group, uh, that season, we're going to go down in history. So it's, um, it's all good, really, for me. You seem to have a great recollection of, of those games and every detail of that season. I'm not sure if you remember this, but at the end of it, sort of the regular season before we got to the playoffs, there was a, yeah. a, a sort of a really bad run of form for the club. The, yeah. uh, there was only one goal, I think, in the last five games and, and no wins. Was, was they often, you often say that motivate, uh, sorry, momentum is key going into the playoffs. Did, yeah. w- did the heads dip at all before the Bristol City games? Uh, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say it did. I was injured for uh, the last month of the season. I'd, I'd had an operation on my, on my groin and I decided to do that um, because it was looking that um, there was a chance we were going to get in the playoffs. And the manager said to me that um, if you're going to be fit for the end of the season for the playoffs, you know, I mean, you've got to get it done now. So it was a decision to make, flip, flip of a coin. So I decided to get it done um, and I came back um, for the playoffs against Bristol City. And um, Obviously, we, we didn't go into it with full of, full of confidence, but we had, we had something over Bristol City. Um, the, the Bristol City didn't like coming to the knee. They didn't like playing as out of their players either. You know what I mean? There was a, a friendly rivalry on the pitch, but a, a, a huge, fierce rivalry off it. And, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and um, I remember the first game wasn't the greatest of games. Thorny scored a wonderful header, um, but the game didn't have many chances in it. And the second leg again was probably one of the worst games I'd, I'd witnessed. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you know what I mean? I was subbed that day. And, um, it, it, it didn't start very well. Didn't end very well for both sides. It didn't really get going. And, you know, I mean, normally playoff games are full of goals, full of incidents, and both games were, were probably horrific in, in terms of um, for supporters, for TV and stuff. But we got the job done, and and, and we, we, we were there to do what we needed to do, and got ourselves in the playoff final. And, and again, not a very good game again. It was, you know what I mean? But we, we got over the line in terms of performances, did what we needed to do, and um, three clean sheets in the playoffs is is pretty work, pretty rare. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know what I mean? So defensively, we were solid. Considering we, we'd um, we'd lost a few games running up to the game in the playoff game so um, I think it's something that we should have been really proud of What's your memory like of that day of the playoff final day as a whole not not just the, the match itself um, For me probably started Thursday obviously our game was a Sunday um, Thursday um, I'd say I, I was struggling again with my groin and, and I had to train I hadn't trained a couple of days before um, and, and Lenny gave me a deadline of you have to train today or I can't put you in the squad I'm picking the team today after training and the subs and, and I need you on the pitch if, you, if you're going to be fit so I had a decision to make and I trained. I felt really good. It's probably the best I've felt in about eight weeks. And trained, felt all right, pumped pretty sharp, struggling fitness wise a little bit, but leg wise, injury wise, I felt great. And um, and for me it started then and um, obviously named on the bench very some very very extremely disappointing people um, to not be in the in the team and in the squad. But I saw the bit for me it was something to, to aim for, something to to get my, get myself sharp in the next couple of days for and uh, the build up for the game. We went out for a walk on the morning as we normally would and the, the, the drive to Lenny Stadium was, was just unbelievable. Um, supporters everywhere and, and it just felt really real but the pressure then just kicked in. Um, in the change room there was a very sombre, um, quieter, probably dressing room than normal, you know what I mean, where we were excited but we were there professionally to do a job and um, they were obviously quite loud QPR, you know what I mean, before the game. The, the, you know, considering we beat them 4-0 um, previously at Loftus Road, they'd, they'd come there with a bit of, bit of arrogance, a bit of confidence, a bit of, bit of a swagger. And, um, and you know what I mean? I remember stood in the tunnel waiting to go out. You know what I mean? The boys were going to go out and um, I was stood at the back. And, you know what I mean? You heard heard how loud they were. Danny Seto was shouting and screaming and um, trying to get Mark Bertram as well, trying to put us off our game. And um, But it wasn't it wasn't to be, you know what I mean? They, they played all right. We, we did all right, you know what I mean? But it was a, it was a game where it was... It wasn't. It lacked a bit of quality, uh, and, um, and thankfully we got there in the end. Really. Do you reckon it was any more pressure because the game was in Cardiff and we learned oh. for you guys? Yeah, oh, 100 percent. I think, uh, and I think our performance probably, probably the performance has showed that um, we were nervous in the semi-final to get in the final because we knew that, the, you know, what I mean, that the, the, what was it, what was at stake, and in the final that it was a, it was a case of we didn't want to lose, didn't dare lose, and you know what I mean. I remember, remember looking at looking up at the at the, at the, at the time and. Um, asking the referee how long, and you know what I mean. What five games, to, five minutes, six minutes to go, and thinking, oh, what what, what am I going to do? Where am I going to put my penalty? That was the, that was my only my only thought in my head was, where am I going to put my penalty? And you know what I mean. And I dare not miss. You know what I mean because yeah. the pressure and the and the um, well, it wasn't it wasn't worth thinking about what the what the possible outcome was going to be if we lost. And um, thankfully, it didn't it didn't have to materialise because yeah. that would have been that would have been. We talk about pressure. 
don't think yeah. the pressure would have got any bigger than that. When you were on the bench, when you were on the bench and warming up, what were your thoughts before coming on? Um, just thinking that obviously from the previous game we played against QPR, that Ernie had, had loads of joy. He got himself hat trick against um, uh, Danny Sheet on Clark Carlisle, Island, but he was getting no, no change at all from them. They, 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 they shadowed him really well defensively. They'd covered and obviously done the homework and, and realised the mistakes they made in the previous game. And, um, and obviously about probably about 30, 35 minutes to, to go. You know, I mean, just after half time, Lenny told me to warm up and said that you're coming on. You know what I mean? Basically, it's yeah. you're coming on, things aren't working. You know what I mean? We need to win the game. We can't afford to go 1 0 down chasing the game at, at, at this level. So, uh, told me to come on, and obviously, and obviously when, when I'm coming on, it was only one person I knew was going to come off because it was, it was a like for like. Ernie comes off, I go on. Thorny was never never an option to me, really. That You know what I mean? That, that me and Ernie didn't really play together that much for it to, uh, to take that kind of a risk. So, obviously, when Ernie's coming off, I, you do notice and you do hear that. Um, the groans and the, and the noises from the fans because it was a big call. You know what I mean, Lenny? If we'd have lost that game and he brought off the, the superstar of the, of the of the team, you know what I mean? He potentially would have lost his job because the you know what I mean fans obviously wouldn't have been very happy. But it turned out to be an absolute masterstroke from his from his side. And you know what I mean? But it just gives he gives Danny Shitter and Clark Carlisle something else to think about. You know what I mean? I was a lot more direct than Ernie. You know, yeah. I, I ran I ran over the top a lot more and uh, ran in the channels and that was my game. And, uh, and thankfully the goal came up from one of those runs and, and that kind of play which they were a little bit tired and, and leggy and, and I got a little bit of a uh, little bit of joy I mean you'll have been asked this more times than you can probably count now but uh, that, that goal talk us through it it's a, it's a great um, strike yeah well it was, a, it, was a, it was an awful clearance by um, uh, Clark Carlisle he, he, he misjudged the ball tried to clip it forward for, for, for one of his forwards and, and he hit it straight and Gareth Wally who, who took a touch on his right foot he's obviously notoriously left footed uh, placed the ball over the top. I wouldn't say it was a hit and hope because he, he, he was technically excellent, Gareth. Uh, yeah. Put it over the top and just give me something to run on to and time to run really well. Got ahead of Danny Shitu and the ball just lost it up really nicely. It's a, it's a loft over Chris Day's head and you know what I mean? He, 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 got, he got extremely close to uh, Danny that day to, to, to get something on it but you know what I mean? Once I'd hit it, I knew it was going in. It was just inch perfect. He didn't get, I don't think he got a, a, a fingertip to it. It was just, just that perfect that it missed his gloves and and landed in the net, and then just the chaos after that, the noise after that, and but then the realization of we still got four or five minutes to play, and, um, and then the pressure then ramped up again. That you know, I mean, we've got to see this through. They're going to throw at everything at us, throw the kitchen sink at us, and let the whole firm. The defense has been brilliant all day, but you know what I mean. I don't think I touched the ball again in the next four minutes. I just run around and, and hope for the best. And um, you know what I mean. And obviously, then played up front a lot on my own, and Thorny dropped back in the midfield. And, throwing balls and pumping balls forward hoping to waste a bit of time and, you know I was so tired mentally drained physically drained considering you know I'd missed a lot of football I'd, I'd wasted all my energy with celebrating and, and things and and, uh, and then and then we had to hang on hang on for the for the rest of the game and then and then cue the celebrations after I was going to say what was it like in the dressing room after that uh, well just straight after the game and you know what I mean I, I realised then you know what I meant to everybody with the first people who came up to us Leo, Gav Gordon Scott Young you know what I mean who, who, who all weren't on, on the bench and in the squad that they knew how much it meant for them to me to the club and um, it was great on the pitch seeing the players celebrate with the fans and, and Sam and Lenny etc and then in the changing room it was very very quiet it was we all you know what I mean we all, we'd, we'd all think I think wasted a lot of energy mentally and physically um, on the pitch and when it was in there we were we were all sat in the showers and and, and uh, in the baths and um, having a few cans of lard and just just, just realising I think you know what I mean that we that we'd done something but also at the same time not realising how much of a big thing we'd just done um, you know what I mean we thought it was a big thing but I don't think we'd realised half um, or maybe the quarter or, or you know what I mean how big it was and, and what, what it meant to everybody else because uh, obviously when we left Millennium Stadium to go and do bits and bobs which we we were all going to plan to do anywhere with the club and uh, with sponsors and things. It, it then, it then, uh, we then realised how big a thing it was, and you know, I mean, the town was, or the city was just absolutely just in raptures, and it was absolutely fantastic to see. And it probably carried on for days and days and days, and we probably stopped celebrating about Tuesday. I think we were back in training on Wednesday, and it was a, it was a quite a full of a group of players who just turned in the train on Wednesday. What did you like about the city? Obviously, the, the club and will have a special place. But you, when being down here, living down here, was there anything you loved about the city outside? Just, oh, just for me, it was the first city I'd ever lived in. You know, it was very friendly. And it was, it was, it was just, just it was obviously massive compared to what I, what I'd been used to. And um, I just, it's just, I loved it. I just, I, I really did like, like, love how, um, how passionate everybody was, how, how friendly everybody was, and 
and for me, I, as long as you give hundred percent to the football team, then the people give that back to you on the um, in the streets and, and wherever you met them. And it, for me, that was just a given. And you know, I mean, that was you know, I never ever ever said I was a, a talent in football. And one thing I did do, I just ran around and, and give my all. And you know, I mean, the way I played, that was that was just what I did. And, um, and thankfully, I, I got loads back from fans and still do. So it's it's lovely, really. The a season after that, obviously Cardiff were in. I think it was called the first division then, wasn't it? Or now, now yeah. the championship is. I mean, yeah. your career at Cardiff sort of not not fizzled out, but you had a couple of loan spells then afterwards. Yeah. Do you look back with any regrets over the the way sort of your spell ended? Um, no, I suppose, well, it's, it's similar to what I said to Leo the other day that um, my goal was the best thing what happened to my career, but then the worst thing went on in my career. You know what I mean? Because I spent all my Cardiff career. Um, because obviously with 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 moving into the championship um, at the time, um, they came with new signings: Alan Lee, Richard Langley, um, etc. And the club going in a new direction, which meant less game time for me potentially. Um, and 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 uh, you know what I mean. So, but I wouldn't change it for the world. You know that that, that one massive moment in my career and such uh, highlights. Um, I never looked at the negatives of it, and you know what I mean. And it did mean I didn't play as much football and. And then subsequently meant that Lenny lost his job because the, we lost a few more games. And then Dave Jones came in and um, and, and, and I ended up leaving the football club. And uh, you know, listen, I'd never changed what happened that day at Millennium Stadium because you know, what I mean, it, it, and it subsequently did have a negative effect on my kind of city career. But um, I didn't play as much football as I wanted because he, he, there were clubs bringing in um, in their eyes better players and, and, and moving into another level. And, and if we didn't do that at the time. We wouldn't be where we are now as a, as a football club. So I've got yeah. no, I've got no fans that, that, that teams have to move on, clubs have to move on and push it in, in a new direction, and and they can't stand still. And, and as a team and as a group, we knew that because I think the realization for me came when, when we met on the Wednesday at the club um, that um, players who'd been offered contracts had the contracts taken away because we got promoted, and, and then they decided to go to another level. So I was quite lucky. I, I still had a job and I had contracts. And, um, you know what I mean, but for people not so lucky as me, it, it didn't work out that way. Where does where does that goal rank then for you in terms of the goals you've scored? Um, it's the most important goal by by, yeah. by by a million percent. You know what I mean because it doesn't get any bigger than that. Um, as quality, you know what I mean. It, it's up there. You know what I mean. I, I've got probably about five favourite goals in my career, um, and that's just you know what I mean for me. I, I, I can't disguise I can't disguise how, 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 how important one is for the other one, but you know what I mean. It's 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 right up there with with the best. Um, we've got a couple of questions uh, to, see, yeah. to sort of test your memory of Cardiff. So quiz questions. So a couple so of quiz right. tests. You. But a, 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 I think to be fair, I think he's, so far he's in very you've well. Answered you've answered two of them. You've answered two of them in, uh, in what you've already said. So uh, I think we can we can move on from those two. Uh, I yeah. think they. I mean, you, you've mentioned Thorny got the goal against Bristol uh, in the semi final, and it was Ernie who you came on for in the final. Uh, I think the other yeah. ones are a bit harder. You've you've got them written down, don't you now? Yeah. So. Um, you scored on your Cardiff debut against Northampton and winning 2-1, but who scored the other Cardiff goal? Oh, God. Now you're asking. Uh, gosh. I'm going to, it's, going to, it's going to be a random guess. I don't even know why this, why this, why this lad in my, in my thoughts. But I'm going to go Leighton Maxwell. I'm not sure why. Wow, Absolutely he's got right, yeah. He's right. smashed his team, yeah. yeah. Right. Great answer. Yeah. Great answer. Um, how many red cards do you get in your Cardiff spell? One against Crystal Palace, unfortunately, nice. and I got it was the same day that Willie Boland got sent off as well. It was, was. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You mean it might be too, too I, easy? I think. I, I, <laughs> think, I think. I think this last one might be the hardest one, though. Right. So you only took one penalty for Cardiff, and it was saved. Shocker. <laughs> who was it against, and who saved it? Leeds United, and it was uh, Neil Sullivan. It was the worst penalty I think I've ever seen <laughs> anybody anybody take in my entire life, and it was a. Uh, we finished nil nil, and that was uh, that was uh, yeah, that was a nightmare. That that was a nightmare. I mean, that, uh, that Cardiff Leeds is always still a big rivalry to that. Well, yeah, it was. And, and to be fair, I don't, I don't even know why I took it, and uh, I wasn't down to take it. I just took it because um, I got thrown the ball, and I was I wanted to I wanted to make something happen, and unfortunately, it wasn't wasn't to be. You know what I mean? Like, I learned from the mistake. Just the next couple of penalties I did take, I put my, put my foot right through it. <laughs> what, what was it like? I mean, the atmosphere at Ninian Park. Lots of fans today will still say they miss it with with the kind of yeah, yeah. No, oh, nothing. Fabulous, it. yeah, fabulous. I don't think you'll no, you'll never get that back. You're never going to get it back. You know what I mean? It's um, it's where it's it's it's, it's congregating fans together in the atmosphere. You know what I mean? From different from different areas. I found a card if that. You know what I mean? Behind both goals with different atmospheres. You know what I mean? In the corner next to the away fans was a. You know what I mean? Obviously the Bob Bank. There was 
so many areas where you get a diff- different atmosphere and, and 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 when things are going your way, not going your way, when the ball goes out, you know what I mean? And this is the roar with the crowd, and you know what I mean. Some, sometimes you think there was thirty, forty thousand in there, and you know what I mean. There was what sixteen, seventeen thousand, and it was so the atmosphere was so hostile for opponents and so good for us. It was it made it a very easy place to play football. And have you got down to the uh, Cardiff City Stadium much in, in recent yeah, years? Yeah, I've been. Yeah, I've been back a few times, and obviously I was there for the day that we got promoted from June on nil. And the atmosphere—that's the best atmosphere I've seen uh, back at the new stadium. And um, obviously we had a warm around the pitch before the game, and the atmosphere right, before the game was just electric. It was just unbelievable. And um, obviously after the scenes after were great, and, but it's just so different. It's you know what I mean. It's hard to get a number of fans together and singing songs and generating atmosphere, but it's just a the life in terms of, of a new football fan, really. And, but, you know what I mean, football, it's a business now. It's not as, yeah. probably as um, as liked for supporters. There's not as much link. I don't, what I find now, fellas, is, is the link between fans and, and fans and players is not like it was when I played. And, you know what I mean? Obviously, we had the walk from the from the ground to the car park um, yeah. over the road. And the link with fans, you'd, you'd have a chat with them on the way to the car. And it, it doesn't happen anymore now, really. You know what I mean? It's everything separate. And that's from top level all the way down probably to Championship Stroke League won it there's some clubs so it's such a different animal football now and at the moment obviously we don't have football uh, no. are, you, are you keeping how are you keeping occupied how are you keeping your football fix uh, um, I'm loving I'm loving all the old football which they're putting on um, but it's just not like Premier League years etc but it's just no it's not it's not it's not the same it's not you know what I mean I hear whispers every day that, that, that dates here things are happening things aren't happening and you know what I mean that, that other countries are going to start and uh, it's, it's as long as everyone's safe and healthy and fit, then for me, football can take a back seat, back seat for now. But we do want it back because it's it's just an it's the, it's the norm, and there's loads of loads of people rely on it for, for certain things to talk about, etc. But um, I just want it back, really. To be honest. Thank you very much for chatting to us. Really, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.